I think it's it's less about communication and it's more about how you live. I mean, I, well, I don't totally. think, I don't think that we win the communication war. I think we I think we've already lost it. I think we're going to continue to lose it. I think the best thing that you can do is be an example is to mm -hmm. is to live a life that's healthy that way that and and to be compassionate to others and have empathy. And that's like, true. And and, and 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 let that be something that someone is attracted to and and seeks information and question why you see here's everything's so bad in this world and i feel so terrible time and yet you are so positive and you have energy and you're happy allow that to shine through and allow them to look to you to ask like yes. what is it about you that makes you this way and then that gives you the opportunity to present that because i tell you i think just trying to yell it or scream it or argue yeah. or debate it i think we lose no, think we no. Lose. so yeah i guess the hope there is like just all the resurgence of interest in becoming like a personal trainer a coach or somebody that wants to make a difference there's a lot of people out there that want to do that be that example and i think that we just need to promote and lift them up more uh instead of just like keep promoting all this news and nonsense oh here we go i almost never do this giveaway but I'm going to do it right now, and then I'll tell you why, because there's some crazy stuff going on here at Mind Pump headquarters. Here's the giveaway. This super bundle. This is the biggest bundle that we have. Here's what you get. MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Prime, MAPS Anywhere. Okay, it's five programs. One of you will get that for free, but you got to do the following. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Make it a good comment. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things, and if we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. You'll get free access to the super bundle. All right. Why am I giving away the Super Bundle? Well, some crazy stuff just happened. We never do the following sale. It's a short sale, but it's huge. We usually wait till Black Friday, but we're doing it right now. 50% off all programs. Every single MAPS program right now, 50% off. And there's no limit to how many you can get. You can get them all and use the code for 50% off. So here's the code. You ready? MD2022. MD2022. Gives you 50% off any MAPS program. Just go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. And again, find any MAPS program you want or all of them. Use that code MD2022 and get 50% off. All right, here comes the show. Contrary to popular media, the biggest threat to modern societies, biggest by far, is obesity and the health-related issues to obesity. You know, I want to bring that up because- this is This is controversial? It is because people are like, oh my God, you know- Whatever, name the current thing. Yeah. It's the biggest existential threat to us. It's going to destroy everything. If you actually looked at the numbers and you looked at total deaths per year, um, obesity crushes everything. Yeah. If, if you look at its effect on mental health, obesity and its health uh, you know, effects crush everything. And right? it has been for decades now. It's not like a, it's not like a, a, you know, a current crisis that we're in the, in, in the middle of, you know, like COVID. It's like this thing has been going on. This has been going on year for after year after year and yeah. growing and yes. getting worse. But it's more than that, right? So we know what the deaths are, although I think the deaths are understated. It's somewhere near 100,000 deaths a year and three or four million per year in the world. But I think it's more than that because it's hard to uh, it's hard to really quantify because obesity and health effects can lead to other things. And then you die of cancer or you die of something else and they attribute to that and not necessarily obesity. So I think the number is much higher. But there's that. There's the mental health effects, which we don't really quantify. But we know for a fact that poor health has a dramatic impact on anxiety, depression, um, bipolar disorder, um, paranoia. It definitely makes people feel more negative and less positive. Here's some other stuff. And again, the, we don't have the numbers to, to really point to with some of this stuff. It dramatically it decreases productivity and innovation. We know this through some of the fitness studies that we've done uh, or that we've seen with, you know, when we did corporate memberships, right? Where we show that for every dollar a company spends on fitness, uh, if an employee uses it, the company will get back $2 in productivity. We know fit and healthy people uh, buy things differently, make different choices, feel more positive, are more productive. And it's, it's impossible to even quantify what that could potentially mean for society, not to mention the cost on society from a dollar standpoint. Right. I was going to bring up uh, the uh, cost of the healthcare system mm. in terms of bankrupting uh, in the future if it was to proceed at the rate that it's going at. Oh, it's, uh, it, it will bankrupt uh, modern societies. And modern uh, yeah. Western medicine doesn't have a solution for these chronic health issues. It's, it's, they're all behavior-based. Nobody's really talking about it that way or talking about what it, what it's, 
No, now, why, now why do why are we so concerned about climate change as opposed to obesity? I think it's an easier political sell. It's mm. an easier way to divide people and to provide a solution, right? Like imagine if a politician. Well, I mean, one of them, oh, no, come on, dude. Okay. One of them potentially <laughs> ends the earth. The other one is ending people's lives. Two different things though. And because like, like, because here's the thing, like that's something that collapse society and what you do. And what by the done. way, I'm not. And I'm just I'm just Using addressing it. what Justin said. I'm yes. not. I don't necessarily agree or not or disagree as so much as like they're they're two different things. Like one is like a choice that people are making, right? People are making a choice personally to overconsume, right, and not take care of their health. Right. Whereas uh, you potentially, Justin, polluting the earth is you're affecting my life, even if I'm a healthy person. Well, and so it, they're two different monsters. It's actually not because mm. if you think about it this way, what's the what do humans have that makes us really good at solving uh, big problems? What have we always done to solve biggest problems that we've Innovate. encountered? Innovate. We don't know what the impact on being sick and unhealthy has on innovation. <coughs> Just look at our markets, for example. So our markets respond to our needs and our wants. Go to the grocery store. This is an easy one to see. Look at all the food in there. What, what do the markets cater to? Convenience and palatability, right? Our habits, which are driven by our bodies and how we feel, because this is a filter through which you receive the world, that drives a lot of stuff. And so, you know, think about all the money that goes into innovating. So are you saying that because there's so many people that are unhealthy that we can't divert that money towards other other things? And like there's innovating. unknown costs. Like, we don't know what advancements we I mean, you have. could also make the case. I'm just going to play devil's advocate today. We, sure. uh, you, we could also make the case that uh, all these sick people are uh, forcing an urgency to innovate also. Like, if we were all so healthy, we wouldn't have all these issues or, that were happening or that wouldn't be so alarming. And because they are so alarming and growing and becoming worse, now all of a sudden we're looking into these things. So you can make that case too. Well, well, uh, let me ask you this: Who is what group of people is more likely to innovate better and produce better? Yeah, healthy, healthy people, people yeah, or very sick people. That's fair. You know, so we. But I mean, the healthy people are going to innovate because there are so many sick people. If there wasn't so many sick people, maybe they wouldn't be trying to innovate. Well, think about where they would innovate. It would be much more proactive rather than reactive. Yeah, you I, know? I, and and I what problems could we tackle? Yeah, like if we let me put it this way: if I could snap my fingers and change one thing that would have profound effects on everything, I would snap my fingers and make everybody healthy. <clears throat> think about that: mentally and physically healthy people. If all of a sudden everybody was mentally and physically healthy. Um, not that that could ever, I mean, obviously this is extreme, but it was, imagine if we did that, what would that change? That would change everything. It would change parents, it would change companies, it would change markets, it would change uh, the way we, we vote and the decisions that we make. So it has profound effects and we're not even, and you know what's really starting to get a little worrisome <clears throat> is that right now a majority of Americans, a small majority of Americans are overweight, but a minority are obese. But that that number's growing. I think obesity now sits at like 30-something percent. Wait, what? You just said a small majority is overweight. The yeah. mo a majority is overweight. Small majority, meaning it's like uh, like 50-something uh, percent. So it's not like a big majority. I but believe it's, it's like, higher than that. Maybe I look believe, it up, Doug. Doug look it up. I believe over overweight, like 20 pounds or more, it's like 60-something percent. And then 40-something percent is obese. So obese, I know, is not a majority. But we can look up. I mean, but 40, bro? That's so like huge. almost half. You're right. We're getting yeah. there. And I think a majority is overweight. Yeah. So let's look up overweight, but I know I know obesity itself is not a majority yet, but it's getting there. And what I'm noticing is that I, th I mean I think we'll be there in a decade, <clears throat> probably. Yeah, no, for sure. Space. The way it's the, the look at say, though. Doug. So we have 36.5 percent of adults have obesity. Okay, oh, I thought it was okay. 40. However, 32.5 uh, percent of American ad adults are overweight. So you take those two numbers together, and basically that would be. What about uh, no. 68, 69% no, of people work like are that. overweight? No, no, no. Because or you, obese? It, no, it's not quite that way. Look up, just look up what percentage of Americans are overweight. Just look up that number. Are they deciding that based on BMI? BMI yeah, uh, unfortunately, you, you, that's what they're using. I mean, that's okay. Which is skewed. That's well, the best number we they have. They keep throwing out obesity numbers here. Um, I, the last time I looked, it was something like sixty something. Yeah, you know why? Because we're moving the we're moving the market. I know. <laughs> yeah, we keep like, moving the, we know everybody's fat. Well, we keep but, changing uh, the definition <laughs> of it. Right? We're not, yeah, we're well, keep... if uh, thirty two point five percent of Americans are overweight, and then an additional thirty six point five percent are obese, and I would take I don't know if it's numbers. additional or if they if they both if it's like one no, of those Venn diagrams. I don't Does that make so. sense? Like, well, I, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I read sixty oh, sixty percent are overweight. Seen. Nonetheless, which would make Doug's n number right? Sixty seven. That would be sixty seven well, or 60, sixty. Yeah, sixty nine percent. Well, nonetheless, here's my point with this because what, what you're starting to see with obesity, because obesity is a whole other category. 
when as that starts to become a majority, what happens is politicians and media start to push to normalize and also victimize. We've already been doing that. We are, and it's getting worse. Yeah. So now what's happening is, and this is going to happen in our lifetime, actually, probably in the next 10 years, you're going to start to see them be categorized as an oppressed class. And we're already seeing this. Weight loss is fat shaming. Weight loss is oppression. Um, and you're going to start to see this more and more. And you'll start to see politicians come out because this is a voter block. And because soon it's going to be a majority voter block, it's going to be normalized and you're an oppressed group. And then targeting them will be considered bigotry. And this is when it's going to get really crazy. And it's we're, just because we're here. We're there. here already, man. Yeah. I mean, look at it. I mean, heaven forbid you say anything about the, you know, cover model on, on Sports Illustrated. Yeah, I saw oh, that. Yeah, yeah. heaven forbid you say something. Yeah, I saw that. You say something and you're you're fat shaming. It's all. And here's the thing that okay, the the companies are smart. Let's. I mean, the companies that are jumping on this bandwagon are smart because they see the future. Yep. And I I believe in the next decade or so that is going to be the majority of our population, which makes the majority of consumers of products. So it's in their best interest. Yep. To market to those people and normalize those people. Right. And as it becomes more in that direction, now I'm not saying it should be. We should make people feel bad. No, the answer should... isn't shame, but to 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 normalize it is only going to move it, to your point that you started this whole conversation. Yes. It's only going to push us in that direction even further. Yes. It's not going to go the other direction. Do I think the answer is to shame those people? No, I don't think that's the answer either. Not at all. But to normalize it and to celebrate it and then to, to point out anybody who doesn't like it or disagree with it as a bigot. Boy, are we heading in a dangerous direction? Very dangerous. And again, it's it the 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 downstream effects. We can't even quantify what this means. Look, you okay? Let me ask you guys, as, as, as trainers, you guys have been doing this for a long time. How much, how much of your client changed as they became more fit? Besides just their fitness. Oh yeah, I uh, mean, uh, like, like night and day personality, I mean, personality, attitude. like the the way that they're motivated to be productive at work, like their relationships, everything, confidence, everything. energy, sleep, sex, yeah. relationships. Yeah. I mean, everything. Yeah. There's, there's you everything. operate better when you're healthy. I mean, bottom line. And so to not be able to promote that and think that that's a divisive uh, thing instead of you're just trying to help people achieve yeah. a better version of themselves is absolutely absurd. Yeah. So my, my message to fitness professionals, because what will happen to a lot of people, and I remember being like this even as an early trainer, is you would see this message and it would just piss you off. And you'd be like, that's unhealthy. That's whatever. And what we need to do is we need to be empathetic, caring, but honest. You have to do both. Honesty. So this is the biggest thing right now. Yes. Who's who? <laughs> who's going to be left that's going to be honest? Yeah. There's I not going to be a lot of people left on it because they're scared. Well, yeah. I mean, what what Sal's saying is so is so spot on though too because it's such a we it's a fine dance here. You can't because you got to be very careful on how. I mean, look what happened to Jordan. Yeah, you want to push people away. I mean, yeah, look, well, look what happened. Look what happened to Jordan well, you Peterson. Don't have to be nasty Jordan Peterson about came it. out and made a comment about yeah. that and he chose, chose the wrong chose words. Chose the wrong words. Totally no. did. Yeah, and 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 that was so surprising. Yeah. So missed the mark. I mean, yeah, yeah, really surprising for someone who I think is so well spoken. You know, tweeted out something in response to that, and that is not go the way he communicated. That's that. not going to help anybody. It's not. No, no. So you you have to find a way to communicate to people that look. We made our careers on helping people in this uh, particular situation, and you don't help people like this by making them feel like shit or no, terrible. You got to be or, inviting. Yeah. No, you you want to be empathetic. You have to be caring, but you also have to be honest. And you have to, if they want help, you have to be able to help them. What does that say, Doug? 73%. Oh, wow. So it's even higher. 73% wow. will be uh, overweight. And that's from 2017, 2018, which by the way, I bet you exploded. I bet you, yeah, after the pandemic's even worse. Yes. So, I mean, this is a big problem. And, and we look at things like climate change, you know, war, yeah. inflation. <laughs> all this. Go ahead and do the numbers. Doesn't come close to how many people die and get affected every well, single year from this. I just think priorities, right? Like, and I don't put that up there to deny it. It's just that, like, what are our priorities? What can we control? Like, what can we really promote to like move the needle the most right now? And I think that obesity is something we really need to take a real close look at. And the problem is that there is no politician that's going to be able to have an answer for you. Because uh, there isn't something that the government can do that'll- They don't want to. That. They don't want to. They don't want to. It's in their best interest not to. They're making tons of money That's off true. of 
medicating these people that are that have all this issues. And manipulating. Yes. Yeah. When you feel this is true. That's what the, the scariest part about all this. It's in the best interest of the people that have the platforms. The yeah. companies that have the money that do yeah. all the advertising, they're going to continue to market this way. The politicians that are making money on the back door in the mm -hmm. medical system. There's a they, ton of companies that profit off people who are sick. Yes. That's, that's, a, that's a true statement. Totally. Like, and, and also... People, when you this is more of a wake up thing. It the, is. It, and, people and, need to wake the fuck up because the messaging you're going to get is going to be completely the opposite of what we're talking and, about right now because it's not in their best interest. 100%. And the pursuit, the healthy, proper pursuit of improving your health. Okay. So the way we communicate on the show many times, the pursuit of that is very empowering. So when you feel empowered, you're less likely to be manipulated or controlled or fearful right? When you feel like you have more control over your health, which, which really expands for the rest of your life, you're less likely to be fearful and manipulated. The people who are selling you shit or who control these things, they don't want that. They don't want a bunch of hard to manipulate people. They want people who are fearful and easily manipulated. Yes. So they're going to make you Just feel like- Just conform without question. They're going to make you feel like you're a victim. It's not your fault. It's everybody else's fault. Oh no, it's perfectly fine. Oh no, it's actually you know healthy and this is all cool. And- uh, because now they can manipulate you to get you to do what they want. And it's a na this is a nasty game that's being played. And because now overweight is a, actually a bigger majority than I thought, and obesity is getting to that point, we're, this is a big voter block now. So when a majority of Americans are obese, who are they going to cater to? That. Right. And what are they going to do? They're going to make you feel like a victim, and they're mm -hmm. going to say everybody else is bad. Who, anybody who tells you you need to lose weight, they're being oppressive. Right. They're being they're yeah. they're being uh, bigots. They're fat shaming you. No, 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 no. There definitely are people that fat shame, but that's not uh, that's not what's happening. So, and I wanted I wanted to bring that up because this is a big issue that no everybody ignores. I think we ignore it because it requires more personal responsibility. I don't. I don't. It doesn't no, seem as scary. Right? I don't. I don't. Yeah. Uh, I'm so uh, about this. I'm, unfortunately, and, and I'm in this space, so I should be optimistic, but I'm super pessimistic about this like i, I don't think we. it's win. only going to get worse yeah i don't think we can win yeah. yeah i don't think we don't have enough power or voice to to combat the forces that are promoting the message that you're talking about well, the i don't think we and 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 people. add in the fact that that's the easier path yeah, yeah. people people are always going to go the with the path least, of least resistance yes yep. and making change uh, self awareness, looking inside, working, saying Seeking no, resistance, yes, yeah, avoiding like, addiction, yeah. all those things. That's hard. So, uh, and and then if all the messaging is telling you that the hard way is not the right way, or why go that yeah. way, or it's oppressive, yeah. and all the things that you're saying, well, I just how do we win that? And to to add insult to injury, the people, the popular people, uh, or the people getting the attention who are communicating weight loss and health, do it wrong. And communicate the right, wrong message. Right. You know, I hear, I just, I was just on a podcast and uh, the guy interviewed me said, you know, how do you feel about when people go to the doctor, get bad, you know, blood work back or whatever the doctor says, hey, you need to move more and eat less. It's like, well, it's like telling somebody who's on welfare, having, struggling to feed their kids. Oh, you know what you need to do? Stop spending money. You need to make more money and save more money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, a basic it's not, advice. it's not that simple. We're, we're behavior based, emotional creatures. It's much more complex than that. And so. The problem is the messaging, and this is what we always try to battle, right? The messaging was just hype, motivation, hate yourself, beat yourself up, feel yeah. like crap, restrict yourself. That doesn't work. So now you're getting people who turn to you know, the fitness space and say, all right, I'm going to do something about this. Then they get this crappy information. doesn't it's work for them. It's a perversion of the message. Absolutely. So how do we solve this? We got to talk about this in real ways. We got to talk about this from a behavioral standpoint. We have to talk about what it really means. We'd have to talk about self-care and not self-hate and how you should feel after a workout. You should not feel like you just well, beat the crap I think, out of yourself. I, you should I, feel good. I think it's it's less about communication and it's more about how you live. I mean, I, well, I, don't, totally. think, I don't think that we win the communication war. I think, we, I think we've already lost it. I think we're going to continue to lose it. I think the best thing that you can do is be an example is to mm -hmm. is to live a life that's healthy that way that and and to be compassionate to others and have empathy yeah, and that's like, true and and, and and let that be something that someone is attracted to and and seeks information and question why you see everything's so bad in this world and I feel so terrible time and yet you are so positive and you have energy and you're happy allow that to shine through and allow them to look to you to ask like yes. what is it about you that makes you this way and then that gives you the opportunity to present that because I tell you I think just 
trying to yell it or scream it or argue yeah. or debate it, I think we lose. No, no. So, yeah, I guess the hope there is like just all the resurgence of interest in becoming like a personal trainer, a coach, or somebody that wants to make a difference. There's a lot of people out there that want to do that, be that example. And I think that we just need to promote and lift them up more uh, instead of just like keep promoting all this news and nonsense that just keeps yeah. bombarding And when us. I talk about communication, I'm referring to that, right? Yeah. I don't think... You're not going to go and beat it into people because no one's going to listen. It doesn't work like that for anything. Definitely be the example. And then when people ask you or like us, right, people seek us out. We don't hammer our show into people's living rooms or whatever. They'll seek us out. Communicate it in effective, empathetic, understanding ways. And remember, you're not talking to fitness fanatics. This is another thing I like to tell people in our space yeah. is we confuse we think other people are like we are. No, they're not. You are you work in the fitness space. This is your passion. You're a fanatic. They are not. You cannot tell them what works for you will work for them. Like, you know, you hear fitness people all the time say like, oh, you just got to do it. You just got to have discipline. You just got to get up and make it happen. And I love eating healthy because it's great. And, you know, a non-fitness fan asking, yeah, you're, you're like, one percent dork. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to help the ninety. I mean, it reminds me of the stupid forum post that we got into it with. Also, it's just like some of these kids are so naive when they want to come in and argue and debate with us about stupid fucking minute things that re are related to like programming or nutrition. It's like, man, you 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 are talking in an echo chamber of one percent of people that you care yeah. about. We've been doing this long enough, and I we, even when we came into the podcasting space, I remember going like. Dude, it's wide open for us because the po the, the podcast and the, the 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 fitness influencers out there, they were speaking to other fitness people. Yeah. It's like they're not even close to the majority. Well, I want to go help the majority. I want to go help the 76% yeah. that are out there that are either turned off by fitness or have never been introduced to it the right way. Like you guys can go all fight over the 1% who are already addicted to fitness and want to argue over fucking studies. Mm -hmm. I'm going to worry about trying to influence the majority who we're losing right now. 100%. That's the most important thing and you got to communicate differently to them and if you talk to them the way that you like to be talked to and you know the other thing too is what they do is they not only talk to each other they assume there are the fitness fanatics but they also talk to a to the average person when the average person is in that short window of self-hate and extreme motivation like this is what the fitness industry targets they target people who i don't know they saw a picture of themselves on social media and they oh my god that's it. I got to do something about it. I'm motivated. Well, they target themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They target themselves. Yeah. The the same. I mean, and it, by the way, okay, I'm just as guilty of this stuff. I mean, we, and we've admitted this on the show. What drove all of us into this space was an insecurity. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? and most of your fanatical fitness people are the same way. And a good portion of them still haven't figured it out yet. Sure still are working through that insecurity. It's what drives them to never miss a workout and never not count yeah. their calories. And it's because they're so insecure, they've used that to fuel their motivation. And then they, in turn, turn around and market and try and sell to themselves, mm -hmm. not realizing they're the fucking smallest percentage of this whole thing. Like, yep. And you're not, you're helping, you think you're helping because you're all you're really doing is feeding into other people that have the same insecurity as you. Totally. That's all you're really totally. doing. Totally. So it's like when someone comes to you and says, hey, I'm thinking about, you know, doing like, you know, maybe 15 minute walks, you know, four days a week. And then the fitness fanatic's like, nah, that's a waste of time. <laughs> Get in the gym, hammer yourself. You really want to take this serious? I mean, I remember doing that as an early trainer yeah. myself. And I apologize to any Come talk <laughs> to me clients. when you're serious. Yeah. Uh, I know, dude. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. We started out with some church this morning, you guys. I know. It's a good <laughs> time. We're coming in hot. <laughs> anyway. Hey, speaking yeah. of that, this guy, <laughs> hey, I come in the other day. Okay. So I'm getting, Vicky's cutting hair, right? And uh, so I always go first. Justin's normally like working out a little bit. And uh, Vicky's like, and then I hear the music over there, and Vicky's cutting my hair. She goes, "Is that is that gospel music?" What? <laughs> and I and I look at Vicky, and I'm like, "Oh, it's probably gonna it, watch. It's gonna transition to some like, like dark metal, metal. yeah, Maybe dark metal, metal. So. <laughs> right afterwards, right?" Yeah. And then like ten minutes goes by, and I'm like. This might be gospel music. I said, Justin, what are you listening to yeah, over there, bro? bro? Yeah, I'm, I'm into it right now, dude. I'm like, I'm <laughs> what the gospel lift? music. I mean, I don't know, dude. It was like striking a chord. I think it's just because I've just been consuming so much negative uh, just information, news, whatever, dude. I'm just like thinking oh, about that, world problems and everything on fire. And it's just like, and your devil music is, I need some to, 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 <laughs> yeah, that ain't, that ain't working. Dude. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. not, it's just adding a little more grease to the, to the fire. You know, I need something that's like uplifting and positive and like feeds my soul. 
So yeah, I started doing a little gospel and working right. out. <laughs> yeah. yes, That's bro. great. Yes, dude, I died. Yeah, I, seriously, I was. Yeah, dude, it's weird because like I, you know, I, it, it reminds me. It has like a nostalgia to me because I, uh, especially when I was in Chicago, I would I would go out and listen to live music and like, dude, real good gospel music. Like it's just like, oh, it's powerful. That's dude. true. Yeah. Have you you ever heard a uh, uh, Kanye and his group when they'll do some like gospel stuff? Have yeah, you heard something? Yeah, yeah, Sunday his Sunday church. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Pretty yeah. rad, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know if I can work out to it. I, yeah, it's not <laughs> real. About that. I mean, I'll I do was doing like a trigger session. Bro, I was crazy. Di- but... I was dying laughing yeah. because it's so extreme opposite of what he listens yeah. to. Like you know, like I have my. For sure. I, I get that. Like there's there's times when I feel the exact same way. That's typically when I listen to like country or like lighter music or whatever. It's when yeah. I do that. So, but I mean, that's not that far off from like my rock that I would listen yeah. to. Where Justin's like death metal yeah. and then he went gospel it's well like, there was a little bit of a bridge like i started getting back into like blues and like real soulful mm, kind of music and i love like, i love blues you know something's yeah. got some emotion behind it like all this stuff is just so artificially driven like made in a fucking studio like oh this is the formula this is pop you know yeah. i'm so over that shit and then it just kind of led me back to like people that really emote through their music and then it was like gospel was like Plush. I love. I think. I think the best decades for music. And I know. And these are not the decades I grew up in. Sixties uh, and seventies. I think that was like the pinnacle of like. Well, wouldn't you? You could probably make the and, case, and I'm not like his yeah. a, a musical historian, like probably Justin is or whatever like that. But I, you could, isn't that when a lot of like a lot of like sounds and stuff was created. A lot of experimental sound. Right. Like a lot of stuff. LSD. Was, and you know, I mean, there's a lot of factors to that for sure. Like, it was, mo- and, like and, most, most everything we have today is connected somewhat to that. Right. Like, I mean, there like well, it's if, somewhat of a, a, of a, a modification or expansion on what was created. Well, general those, media, yeah. even, even if you look at movies in the sixties <laughs> and seventies, there was a lot of original, stuff and slowly what's happened is mm-hmm. the, that they figured out the formula to make money so like literally i was at the movies the other day yep. and a com- and a, a trailer comes on it's another jurassic park yeah, yeah but it looks I'm like, good come on. It looks yeah good. see but wanna, that's what they I, know I, I see but well, they know I, that you're I know. watching i mean I've, I, I've talked about this yeah, book right. before uh, on the show it's it's such a good read you know for this exact conversation the hit makers yeah, yeah. i think Derek thompson i think is the the author of it but in that book, he would make the case that everything is tied to that. Sure. Like, so part of what attracts us to a sound, to a movie. A little bit of familiarity. Yes. Yeah. It has to have a little bit of familiarity, and but then some sort of uniqueness yeah. to it, right? And so, an originality to it. So there's, it's a combination always of both. Something that is completely foreign, yeah. we normally don't like. But if it has some sort of- well, uh, Every studio bought that book. So <laughs> yeah. they're all doing that shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's why I'm, I'm always trying to bring up stuff, something like uh, Raised by Wolves. I'm like, this is so- original yeah it just was like something like i never had seen before so i get excited when i hear uh some music like that it's like oh my god i've never heard this sound collectively and and again there's the familiar element to it it's like bringing in some blues bringing in some jazz or like do you you like hard rock or whatever oh yeah i love i love fun i was you know i've been listening to zap you know zap more bounce to the ounce and do what it is oh bro i was in the car (laughs) nine minutes that song is it's the same shit over and over again too everyone's wind and fire dude that's my jam hey speaking of media uh, now uh, as of the airing of this episode this will be out but it comes out today when we're recording this Ricky Gervais' special is going to come out on Netflix. I th- And I saw a clip of it. I think I know why Netflix put out that memo to their employees. Oh, yeah? Did he go the, hard? Or the what? little clip I saw, I was like, oh, he's trying. I think he's purposely... Because you because right now, comedians are pushing the limit. I think yeah. Chappelle came out and opened the door, and everyone's like, fuck it. That's I wonder, I right? I wonder if that's kind of a thing. Like, they've watched each other's specials, and they're like, hmm, yeah. like, and, I think I could go a little harder. And remember, Gervais, wasn't Gervais the one that did? He was the last. He was the one who was, he, I mean, I didn't even really know who he was until he did that awards speech where, yeah, he, the Oscar. where, he, where he killed all he, the he was the last good roasted one. every celebrity in there it was so funny and they yeah. were so awkward remember how like, everybody <laughs> yeah. like, oh. i mean like, i, I actually really didn't like, know who he was until that i love like him. when that went Are viral the office huh he came up with the office well i mean he from, saw the american version but yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. i've english. seen the english version oh, too yeah yeah so i mean like like really knew of him like i like like his stand up yeah yeah that part of it like i recognized that that's who that what that guy was but before that i really didn't know of him yeah when that went viral then i started Bro, he goes it. so He's hilarious hard. he goes so hard i can't wait so do you think it's going to be harder than Chappelle's and stuff do you I think do. it's oh wow i do oh that I makes do. me excited especially because he's a he's a white dude he's a wordsmith dude he craft 
laughs like oh it, it, it comes in so like piercingly uh hard like yeah. whenever now, he, like, he delivers it and he's also just, he's out, again he's also like a white dude that comes out and is going to make i know he's going to make jokes that are going to be very yeah that's a good point because Ch- Chappelle can get away with it right a little more right yeah, of course he yeah. can yeah. Chappelle's like royalty when yeah. it comes to uh, comedy especially so to be gervais interesting. but gervais really pushes it if you listen to his comedy he goes did really he have hard. did he, was he a part of actually writing the office or did yeah, he so he, he did oh he, yeah he wrote some of the content even the american version yeah. well yeah well the whole american version is completely based off of that version yeah, uh, and I I like the American version better, but that's just because well, you know, I mean, our I think, culture here is like yeah, yeah different. I think I mean, but they're both good. The actors and yeah. both the actors in the American version are all hilarious. Yeah. Dude. Steve Carell's great in that. Yeah, he's, I love English humor though. But I'm a big. Fan I did too. Yeah, I mean, I'm I mean, I think if, I think if I would have found the English one first, I would have enjoyed it as much. Or you know, I don't know about yeah. more. But I would have enjoyed it more. I saw the original Office, and then I found out that it was based off of the the English version. Mm-hmm. Then I went back and I watched that, and I enjoyed it. But I still like the Steve Carell. Yeah, so I can't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'll put that on tonight. Oh, I can't that. wait. That's gonna be exciting. Yeah, that'll be great. And hopefully, it brings. So this morning, you guys know what that. is it? So it dro- Netflix does like night drops. It's not out right now. It's not. I on think the, it might be out right now. Is it out right yeah, now? It does. We should have watched it together. I would have loved to have watched it with it you guys. Because yeah. I got Warriors tonight. I'll be watching that. Oh no, I'm gonna I'm gonna save it for tonight and try and lift my my poor wife's spirits. Man, she is this pregnancy. I tell you what, this baby better come out and respect the shit out of her mom for the rest of her life. Well, you she's know, be reminded. That's, okay, that's the that's the silver lining in this. You're yeah. probably you guys are probably like making the next Einstein or something. Is that, that something? Is that either that happen? or either that or this kid is like. You got to tell yourself, right? Yeah. You got to tell yourself something like that, right? Well, now. I'm the right. same thing is like what when I stepped in shit the other day, and you're like, "This is an old proverb." It's you know? good luck. Like, it's good luck. Yeah, right? I hope, dude. I hope it's, it's good not, luck. I, don't, I hope I don't know. she doesn't. This baby doesn't wreak havoc like she is right now because. Jessica literally just started getting over the severe, like I've told people, like literally <coughs> bedridden, throwing up. That's how bad the first trimester was. Started to come out of it, and then migraines mm-hmm. are hitting. Like 3 a.m. last night. Yeah. She's like really bad, and it makes her vomit, and I'm rubbing her head all night, and I'm trying to figure out what to do, and oh, crap, you know, we don't have anybody to help. Yeah. I'm calling my, my mom. Nope, she's working. My aunt can't come. No one's coming. I'm trying to figure this out. So I, I I set it up so that I gave her a bunch of caffeine, which helps uh, that helps with migraines. But she's not taking any painkillers because she's pregnant, right? So I did that, and I'm I have an interview to do this morning, and I figured I I set her up with the baby, gave him food. She's got food, water. The caffeine helped enough to where she can manage, and she's like, okay, you know, go. So I'm like, shit, or I'm late. I'm gonna try and make it over here. So I'm driving over here, and I'm already kind of stressed out and lack of sleep, and. I tell you what, dude, I got to say something. This is just my own experience, okay? The worst, most aggressive drivers are moms in minivans. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, every time uh, I'm driving here. coming after you, dude. I am driving here. And that, now, it's when they don't have their kids in the car, okay? Mm. I'm driving. It's always a mom in the minivan, no kids. And so I'm driving here, and I have to get over. And I hate this. Moms. Here's a big pet peeve of mine. There's space between me and the car be- uh, you know, back and front. <coughs> so I'm going to change lanes. I put my blinker on. I hate it when people do this. They see my blinker on, they speed up because <laughs> they don't want to let me in. Oh, you piece of shit. But anyway, I got in anyway because I moved already, but yeah, I could see her start to speed Silicon up. Silicon Valley driving in yeah. general. So like, then you know, warfare this, out you know there. what this lady does? Yeah. So she's, I, she tries to speed up to close the gap, but I already got in. She's behind me. And Thank she's, God for that race car, huh? Oh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Jetta, the Jetta would have never made it. <laughs> Aero Star would have smoked you. Yeah, I don't know, Can you imagine bro. if he was in the Jetta? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I, I put my foot out the window. Yeah. So I, I get in, right? And I could see her looking at me in my rear view mirror. And she's got this like face. And I'm like, God damn, lady. Okay. Yeah. So we go up to the freeway. She's probably having a day, dude. Bro, we know? get up to the freeway. The on-ramp has a very short, <coughs> and there's a lot of cars. We're all getting on because it's rush hour. The on-ramp has a short um, carpool lane. Not long, short, and it's for when the when the meter's on. This this lady gets in the carpool lane with the big line, drives up as fast as she can, and it ends like within like fifteen feet. P- almost pushes me into the wall. Wow! Because she has to get in front of me. Wow. So I'm like, wow. So I let her in in front of me, and I'm looking at her, and I'm like, okay, I need to chill out, dude. <laughs> like, I want to <laughs> fight some mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what am I gonna do, dude? But it's always a mom in a minivan. Oh, like crazy, be crazy, dude. Let it be over. Oh there, my dude. god, dude. We're we're so, going through it right now with Max, dude. I'm so. Uh, I mean, part of me is happy we're getting to the bottom of it, but then at the same time too, like I'm super nervous about my son going under. Like that's not gonna be. Uh, 
exciting at all. Like we got next week, we'll be putting him under to do surgery. Yeah, you yeah. said it was because his, his ears aren't draining properly. So, well, two things, right? So it's the, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. It's your, your adenoid. It's, yeah. Okay. So you're, is that, say, am I saying it right? Yeah, yeah. Adenoid, A D A D E N O I D or yeah. whatever is like, adenoid. yeah, it's swollen. Mm. And because of that, like it, it also causes him to his back of his eardrums not to drain the water out and it sits in there like that. So it was, she, we went and saw a specialist finally, right? So this is our fourth uh, ear infection that we've had. And so finally went and saw a specialist and it was crazy because Katrina said, as soon as she walked up is she's like, oh, he's got a swollen adenoid. And she hadn't even looked at him yet. And she's like, huh? She's like, yeah, does he, does he drool a lot? And she's like, oh, he drools like crazy. And she's like, has he had, has he had slow, is his um, having trouble with speech? And she's like, yeah, no, we've had a speech therapist and everything. She's like, oh yeah. She's like, I can tell already before I even looked at him. Cause that affects how he hears people talk. And yeah, all well, stuff. so I guess the way in, so, and I have two, we had Katrina and I have two friends who both have kind of gone through this and then also had the surgery for the kids and they had the tubes put in. And I guess it's like crazy, you, you know, like where, where kids uh, or you see those those stories where someone uh, couldn't hear forever and then all of a sudden they can. Oh, I yeah. can't do those make me cry. Bro. I know. Right. Yeah. They're like, so I guess it'll be like that for him. Like she's like the oh, day wow. you, the day you do the surgery, he will all of a sudden start talking normal. Because he's the, everything he hears has been hearing this entire yeah, he time. He can understand he's, everything. So it's yeah, muffled. Yeah. It's all underwater. Oh, man. She goes, that's what what he oh, what he's hearing is underwater. So his speech has been been off this entire time. Like and and the speech therapist, when we saw the speech therapist, she discontinued with us because she's like, oh, he's fine. We only can. They, she's like, you can continue if you want with us, but they they thought, oh, he'll just start speaking later on. He's just waiting because cognitively, she's like, he's there. He totally understands everything, so we don't see anything with yeah. that any problems. It's just that he hasn't started communicating. That's what the speech therapist thought, but they, they didn't know any of this was going on, right? So now the specialist is like, "Oh no, what it is is that he is the way he's pronouncing things is the way he's hearing it. Hmm. So when he's talking and communicating with you guys, he thinks he's pronouncing it correctly because that's how it oh, sounds man. sounds to him." So she's like, and you will notice it right oh, away. It's gonna be transformative. For oh, him, it's man. gonna be totally trans. So I'm, I mean, uh, I'm excited. We get to the bottom of it. We're gonna, we're gonna be able to yeah, fix that's it. Nerve wracking. But time. yeah, just the thought of my son going under. Oh, it I can't. Such yeah. a young age. I, like, I oh, mean, oh, that sucks. Katrina didn't know I was gonna. Thank be God for modern medicine for certain things, right? I mean, that's a, a classic example. Yeah. You know, and I you know I had a lot of people. You know, oh, you could go see a chiropractor for this, or you know, maybe try some diet things like that. And I guess it's common that. It starts there. And this is something that like back when we were kids, they they weren't really aware of this. And what would happen is I guess bacteria would build up and then it would work its way into tonsils and then people end up getting their tonsils oh. removed. Hmm. And but all the things you start saying, I'm going like, God, this sounds like me. Like I was a big drooler. I had to have my tonsils removed. Like I have all, I had all those issues. So I'm like, huh. I wonder if I had the same exact same exact condition. Interesting. Yeah. And I and a lot of those people end up getting allergies. Mm. For because of the inflammation that happens in the adenoid, wow. so <clears throat> I had no idea, and I'm like, God, I wonder if I had the same condition. They just didn't know to look for it or pay attention to it when I was a kid, and so yeah, no, I'm I'm excited to get it addressed, but boy, it's been. I mean, this is all why he continues to get sick so much too. Yeah. So he's extra vulnerable to getting sick because of all this too, because he's constantly his mouth is wide open when he's breathing, like. So oh, poor kiddo, I man. Know, what I sucks know. about that, what breaks my heart is that when they're that age, they can't necessarily communicate what's happening. Oh yeah, no, you. you so you don't know. Yeah, you know, you have he no, can't say to you, "Hey, it sounds muffled," or it "Sounds like he doesn't know." You know, he yeah. doesn't even know himself. I know it's gonna be it's gonna be wild to see. Uh, I can't. That's too much. I can't do it. That's gonna. I watch those videos and it destroys me. And those are kids oh, I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, yeah. I, know. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. even know those. You know the ones where they put the, they put the glasses on them and the kid all of a sudden can see. Yeah, them? yeah. This oh. is the first time, but uh, bro, yeah. I literally if I'm scrolling and I see it, I scroll by real quick. It makes me, I swear to God, <laughs> I'm the I lose same. it. I can't do it. Well, I just I, can't, no, I think I too of like it just it, it makes me think like oh what a good kid he is. The fact that he's got all this going on and he's still so, in happy. All he's the time. such a good kid. I know. It's like and yeah, he's the most joyful little boy. Boy, feeling man. he's underwater all the time and oh, like constantly guy. fighting fevers and freaking headaches i'm sure like yeah poor dude oh so, man but i mean we know now and i we know what to do to solve it and i mean katrina thought i was going to be all anti it and not want to do it um and i'm like no well, no it dude. sounds like a fix yeah you it's, know it's it is and the both she's like it's so crazy because she knew she had two friends that had already gone through this and they did the tubes in the ear and everything and she actually never thought to ask him, like, oh, did you notice a difference in their speech? And both of them, like, oh, yeah, like, in the same day, you'll see a difference. 
like the same day he will all of a sudden they said the 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 um specialist said that we even have to be careful on like music like if we play a lot of music too stimulating yeah and oh, so she goes, because he can't process it's too much at once. Yeah, she goes, don't be surprised if, you know, the school calls and you have to come pick him up because he's crying because he might be overwhelmed by the, how much he's going to be able to hear hmm. because he's so used to everything being so low and muffled that when- It he, takes a second to get used to. Yeah, so just keep that but in mind. But he's so young, his brain adapts so fast. Yeah, yeah. and I, I mean, obviously, we're not going to blast music right away on him and he, he'll have a couple of days before he'll go back to school. Have it nice so. and quiet at the house. Yeah, so I think we'll be able to acclimate him right away. I think he's probably just going to be so excited to probably hear his parents and hear everybody like normal, you know? Wow. I can't imagine like listening to all you guys. If you guys were always talking in, it sounded like you was underwater. Normal, normal. <laughs> like, yeah, like Charlie <laughs> yeah. Brown's yeah. The teacher. Yeah. yeah, and you know, it's funny because sometimes I feel like that's how he's talking. He talks like that Charlie Brown. Because that's what he hears. Like, I'm his dad, so I get what he's trying to communicate to me. But the w very few words he says really sharp. Mm -hmm. Like, most everything he says is, like, a little muffled all the time. And I can put it together, like, what he's saying. But I'm, I, I, and I was telling Katrina just, like, a couple weeks I'm like, you know, I'm really wondering when he's so smart. He understands everything. You know he's talking to us right now. When is it going to really come together? And I'm like, oh, maybe my son's just going to be a little bit later, you know? And it was actually when uh, you sent the video over your son, I'm like, God, I, look how well Aurelius is already pronouncing words. I'm like, he's so much younger than Max and Max is not pronouncing those same words that clear. Maybe I, that's where I really started pushing Katrina to like, let's look at it, look into like why he's not there. I know the speech. Thank therapist. God you did that, dude. Yeah. Because this could have gone on a long time without you realizing. Dude, her best, and, and, com her, and, and repeated her antibiotics. Her best friend. Yeah. The, and, and that's really what promoted this was the antibiotics. Because I was like, I don't want to do keep any, put them on that. I don't want to keep putting them on antibiotics. Yeah. Her friend went through 14 ear infections before they found 14? Yeah. And Max is on wow. four. That's why we're, we're already on four already. And we're like, dude, I, I do not want to go through 14 ear infections wow. before we, we finally saw wow. it. Wow. So. Well, that's, that's, uh, well, thank God, man. Yeah. No. yeah. Good, good thing you got answers now. Yeah. yeah next be... week. So, you know, uh, you know, everything hopefully goes well. And then, uh, you know, I can't wait to see what he's like afterwards. Mm -hmm. It'll be really interesting. Wow. And you guys are on the same page with that too, which is good. Yeah. I, I she thought I was going to be the one who was going to be yeah. all anti. And I'm like, no, are you kidding me? I was like, get it in it. She's, she's like, well, you, do you want to wait first and try this? And I could go research the kind chiropractor mm -hmm. and we could try some holistic i'm like fuck that this poor guy he's been dealing with this for this long i'm mm -hmm. like fix that shit you know oh, man. and i guess it's i mean they're under for like 30 minutes you know it's not long yeah doug you went through this right with brianna really how you remember how young she was when she went under oh yeah she went under for other reasons but oh yeah uh, she was sense. the day she was born she went under oh wow yeah and then a year and a half after that she had a um some adhesions and she couldn't have any flow through her body so she was throwing up everything so they had to go back in and remove the man occasions. when i hear stuff like this I, I don't know how parent like i i it affects me so much when my yeah, kid no, has a little cough <laughs> sometimes i think you get yeah, affected yeah. more about my kid oh, than i do I, <laughs> if i tell you anything like that i have desal's messaging me every 15 so she's minutes she's been under four it times. could be this i know he goes and googles like fucking right afterwards and i get yeah, like dude. make sure it's not this make sure it's i just not hate that. seeing kids you know yeah. not feeling good and stuff man uh, it, just, yeah, it crushes it. me you That's know, crazy. Hey, I read an article about, speaking of couples and stuff, most common silly fights that couples have. Silly fights? Yeah, so common silly fights. So, And they're all the stereotypical ones. It was actually yeah. a pretty good article. It's got to be like, one of them has to be about directions. Y you hit it. Yes, yeah. that was one of them. Okay. Getting, getting directions. Temperature. Yeah. That was the number one. Bro, that's last, fighting night, over the thermostat. last night we were fighting over the yeah. temperature. It's were like, you? Yes, dude. It's and moment. it's a silly fight, right? It's not like a real fight. Like we're, I'm just like... It just happens so often. It just becomes... Yeah, well, so the way we have our our, our bedroom set up is, um, which I think is not normal, right? Isn't it normal for the the man to be at the closest to the door? Isn't that like... Yeah, because if the intruder comes <laughs> yeah. in, you got to fight the... Typically, yeah. Like, yeah. You want to be the one, first one. So like most stabbed, houses, that's I've been that way. In this house, um, on the other side, and they're, I'm on the other side, though, because that's where all the windows and then the door so is. So if an intruder comes in... Yeah. Katrina will slow him down yeah. while you get ready to throw. <laughs> See, what's funny about that is I usually end up picking the side if I'm like staying at a hotel, like all the away from the door. And yeah. I didn't realize I was doing that subconsciously. So I started because I was like, well, you're, I'm normally you're getting stabbed tonight. So yeah, <laughs> I, I'm normally good about recognizing that. But in this house, it just happens to be on the opposite side is where all the windows and the cool air comes in. And so I, I sleep on the opposite side. Now, the problem with that is so I. I, I sleep with them open and then the door I have open, like we have a, a upstairs balcony um, uh, uh, where we crack open the door and the wind is, I love it. It feels beautiful blowing in there. Problem is our neighbors, uh, if they, and they watch TV till like one in the morning, every morning and they have a big screen TV and they have those, they have a big, uh, 
what are those like sliding doors? Like there's their whole house on the their, on the side is all window or oh. all glass. And so, so the light comes through. So the light comes uh, through and it's, and because the way the door is angled, it only hits her. It doesn't hit me. <laughs> so she constantly, so I get, start the night off always open, wide open, let the air come in with that. And then she normally tries to wait till I fall asleep. And then I know she closes it, but a lot of times I'm not asleep. And so she'll, she'll get up thinking I'm asleep. And I'm like, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> so I can't sleep. The light. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So we go back and forth. It's too hot. I'm going to have to leave. I, <laughs> I had an uncle that put a lock box over the thermostat. He oh literally, <laughs> he literally put a box with a little padlock on it because That's the ultimate move, right? Him there. and his kids and his wife would fight over it so much that yeah. he had the and he's the only he's the only one with the. Bro, I told stories before. I think I've shared on this podcast. I'm paying the bill. My stepdad, when we were kids, was such a Nazi about this, dude. That if you we would, us kids would be, I mean, wintertime we were freezing, summertime we were sweating balls. Like we never we, yeah. and it was for money reasons, right? Sure. Like our parents did not yeah. want it, like. Just, ever run it either either Saving way. Saving money over little we, things. We, you'd get up as we get we got older, like as teen young you know, young preteens and teenagers, we'd get up and like, you know, be freezing in winter and be like, go turn the thermostat up like two degrees. And he'd you'd hear him poof jump out of bed right away. Oh, open a bed. Who turned on the thermostat? Oh, yeah. It's like, God damn, we moved like one degree up, dude. Just oh, trying yeah. to get a little bit of heat, Dad, before oh, we go to sleep. And dad, spider senses. Oh dude. my yeah, God. My, dude. my my grandparents were the best about this. My grandma and grandfather would literally be, Are you cold? And they would they would go get blankets and jackets for us. <laughs> so we'd be in the, like, we're dressed like we're outside in the house. Bro, so, okay, so I, don't, the answer. I yeah. don't understand then why uh, Chili has not figured out a commercial for this because I feel like- Oh, bro, it's I, the number, I bet you they've saved so many marriages. It, 100%. It is like the, the it's definitely saved. Because if you weren't, here's the thing that I, you know- There's a funny commercial there. Like there they is. They have yeah. to do that. And if you, because, okay, so so people don't know it's a pad that goes under your, your it's on top of your mattress under your sheets and it's, it uses water to cool or heat and it literally almost negates your heater or your air conditioning if your bed is cool or warm because of that that you can turn everything off yeah, and it yeah. makes that big of a difference so it would save money and i think you're right i think a commercial showing how it saves couples well i'm interested i did look and they had the uh chili blanket too so it's like has a little bit of weight it's like 15 pounds or something that like just feels like those uh, gravity blankets, yeah. Yeah. and it it they still do the cooling uh, through there with the tubes and everything. Oh, so, so it's, it's a like blanket. yeah, it keeps the temperature. So it's like you get from the bottom and the top if you want to like maximize. That's gonna be you. I'm like, dude, I have to do. You're gonna that. be an ice cream sandwich. Yeah, because <laughs> Courtney still tries to get the duvet or whatever the fucking French you know name for hot ass blanket is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I gotta, like, dude, get this thing off of me, dude. This thing's way too much. Dude. Uh, it just it, uh, like generates heat. It's uh, a duvet, <laughs> <laughs> honey. Get the duvet. Yeah. You know? yeah. No, it's ours a, is. We keep ours so different. I mean, I'm at this cold as it gets, which I think is like 55 or 52, and Katrina's got hers at like 90 something. Mm. Yeah. So it is like oh, we're we're dramatically different. We're in bed, and Jessica's in a robe. So she's wearing like a thick robe plus <laughs> all the blankets. And I'm literally almost naked on top of everything with my legs out and feet out, like, you know, yeah. whatever. You know, one of the best times for our relationship, as far as this this silly argument, was when she was pregnant and they went through the hot flashes. Mm. She went through, like, her first trimester, she went through, like, all these hot flashes. And I remember her being like me. Yeah. And I'm like, see, this is how I feel every day. <laughs> <laughs> see this? See how you feel right now? She's like, oh, you feel pregnant? Yeah. Like, well, not quite. Yeah, right. That's exactly what yeah, I, yeah. Blew up. I think I'm pretty sure that blew you up. You lost that face. argument? Yeah. 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 Well, pretty sure I still lost. Not that uncomfortable. Yeah. But I mean, that, like, because, but I, I think she, for the first time ever, she realized how uncomfortable you feel when you just run hot. And I'm like, I just run way hotter than you do most mm -hmm. of the time. And so, mm -hmm. and you can only strip down so much. You can bundle up. Yeah. You can get in a, robe and put yeah. three blankets you on shave and, everything you, yeah, you, you, you go all the way dude it's still gonna be hot but you can only peel down so much and if yeah. the room is hot and you run hot you're, dude, you're miserable speaking of uh like silly sort of conversations like that like have you guys ever had that like weird debate over like um what you're gonna do when you when you die like you can be cremated you can be buried and all this and like you come up with like ideas so there's an idea out there this is so you, weird you're talking about this i was just thinking about this yesterday dude you can take so i know yours is hilarious with like the whole like having a party yeah, and all yeah. that and like parading you around <laughs> i i want to do this dude like you could take your ashes get cremated and you could turn it into a vinyl record wow that you could just like have play like what? forever. Like, so if you could do this, like what, what would, album you, put on the record? would you do? Yeah. Oh, oh, I wouldn't wow. put, I wouldn't put music. I would put me, me saying something. 
Yeah. So my kids could play it and you know, it's me. Well, yeah, you could nice. maybe you could do that, but also have like some of like like the ultimate playlist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm all, all sentimental just yeah. like <laughs> what? I put music like, on. Like don't you want to like also, you know, enjoy it? Like, hey, there's grandpa's tunes, you know? Wow. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'd want to be cremated either. I think I don't think I want to be cremated. Oh, you're gonna get buried? I think so. Dude, you're buried. I don't want them to reanimate. You're you're me, cremated dude. too, right? Yeah, yeah. Me, yeah, yeah. dog, what are you? I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. Oh wow, you like roll the dice. Well, yeah, I mean, whatever. so we'll all decide. Chop me up. Yeah, whatever's yeah, yeah. cheapest, and we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Chop me up and eat me. I don't care. <laughs> we're like, wow. Can we see the budget plan, please? <laughs> yeah, Doug hey, really didn't care. So whatever, hey, we'll whatever's cream, cheapest, that's we'll, what we're doing. We'll cremate you and turn you into a dumbbell. We'll sell it on eBay. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Buy hey, Doug's ashes in a dumbbell. You know, what actually made me uh, think about the the bearing thing. I was watching. Uh, do you guys ever watch um, David Letterman's um, yeah. interviews on Netflix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, if you guys yeah, have not great. gone through his his latest seasons, he's so... I mean, for me, it's like it's half... One of the best interviewers. It is. It's yeah, like yeah. educational for us. Yeah. Like, it, I mean, it, it makes... When I listen to him interview, I'm like, God, I want to get on that level. He's so relaxed, and he's been doing it for so long. Right, right. He is a pro, dude. Well, it's yeah. so, I watched him back in the day all the time. He's so... good, and, and his ability and range of the type of people... I mean, he could have... Cardi B on, he could have Obama on. I mean, he could have, he could go any direction with type of guest and make them feel so comfortable and mm -hmm. relaxed. And why'd that like, make you think about dying? So there was a no. There's a he did. He did, I was listening to the one with He's Cardi old. B, and he actually <laughs> took her to uh, uh, the Roosevelt's house, and they and they have like this beautiful property, and they have the house all still staged of what it was like when he lived there and everything like that. And he's like buried on the property, and I actually had never thought about that before. Like if I could keep a property in the family forever, that's like this beautiful property. And I had, that's the only way I'd want to be buried is if it was like, uh, I'm the only one with like Katrina on the property. And it's like a family, like big home that stays in our family forever. And that they we can grow like a fruit tree on top of you so that the roots go in and then. Yeah, I don't know about that. Delicious uh, apples. People picking fruit. Adam apples. <laughs> <He's Yeah. stupid. laughs> it's right back to the these, Garden of Eden. These ad these yeah. apples taste that actually, That's what made me think about it. Was I was watching? I was watching. Uh, Why are these apples so booty? <laughs> Stop telling people that, bro. <laughs> no, Stop telling people so all true. of a sudden. Yeah, I'm, Shut up. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just direct. <laughs> yeah, <you're> so, <laughs> you're fucking direct. Moody is not, not moody. radically. I, I like that idea though on, on the property. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so. Uh, if That's I were to, bad. I, if I were to be buried, I wouldn't mind being like in a place where you know the family still comes and visits, and then we kept and like then just the, haunt them every now and then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It reminds me of that joke. You ever that joke where these two guys like they're best friends and they're like, "Hey, if, if one of us dies first, we got to come back and visit the other guy." And, and one of them does die, and he visits the, visits the other guy in a dream, and he's like, "What's it like, man?" And he goes, "Oh, it's it's wild, man." He goes, "Like just green fields as far as you can see," and he's like, "And I just eat and." hang out all day. And he goes, that's kind of weird. I didn't think heaven would be like that. And he's like, no, no, I'm, I'm a cow in Montana. <laughs> so anyway. stupid. Hey, speaking of cows. <laughs> hey, what oh. a great commercial oh. transition, bro. Yeah, you totally set that hey, up. You get, a, you get a 10 yeah. out of 10 for that listen, one. Listen, this is a 10 out of 10. Is this real, Doug? I'm reading this right now on the TV here. It's real. It's real. <laughs> They're giving away seven pounds of meat when you yes. first sign up for Butcher Box right now. Mm -hmm. That's like your arm. Ribeyes, oh, drumsticks, <laughs> and burgers. Seven pounds. So it's, it's ribeyes, drumsticks, burgers <laughs> seven pounds worth for free in your first order of butcher box this Correct. is a great deal especially given how expensive meat is right now yeah no yeah. kidding what a crazy giveaway seven pounds. and there's no contract right you sign up and you can Pow. cancel yes correct whenever you want mm -hmm. so technically you could take advantage of them if you want doug to. and i cooked some ground beef together this last weekend. You do a it lot was a special you know, moment, yeah, to be it's sure. You, hey, do, hey, hey, my guy's always trying to make us in jealous. The, I know, you know, hey, hold on. Is it, like, that in there. is it like the movie Ghost, except this time it's, it's, <laughs> it's your, your hands in the meat yeah, together? You just just yeah. manipulate the, the Doug, grill, Doug, Doug comes around me. I'm like, is this how you do it, Doug? <laughs> no, more like this. Yeah, no, <laughs> more like, add no, some seasoning. No, your like hands this. are touching in the ground beef as you're like smashing. Less hips, Adam. Less hips. So what you guys make? No, so I had I have this like generic dish that I always make, and Doug put his little you spin on it. that sausage. So <laughs> stop, I just, I'm sorry. Sorry. too far. Keep, keep, keep going. Keep too far. Justin, Justin, too far. Justin. <laughs> no, I, I, it's a go-to dish: uh, ground beef, uh, mushrooms, uh, diced up onions, and then just uh, rice. And I normally just like season. Oh, I've seen you eat that. Yeah, and yeah. I just mix it with like a Montreal seasoning or whatever like that. But Doug gave me this. Is it a Thai paste? 
No, it's uh, Korean. Korean paste. Yeah, gochujang. Oh, is this the one that you did the time the Korean mm. ribs? No, that's different. Okay. Uh, yeah. Everything you make is yeah, good. Those are I good. know. Well, he did two things different Dr. to Dr. my Robert to cook. my recipe and just made it. Oh, and then we also we we crack actually there's three things that he did way better to my recipe. It was much better than when I make it. Uh one was the the Korean paste that he added to it. Then he changed my rice to sticky sushi rice and then he uh put the over easy egg and he taught me I didn't so okay I'm terrible at making eggs. Like it, I, I can make scrambled eggs, yeah. no problem. Yeah, like that's that, that's my jam. But over easy eggs are hard to make. Like you know the the flip. I always no, you don't need a flip. You put a lid. I didn't know that. Yeah, I did. You never see me make. I make twelve eggs in the morning when we're up there. No, today. no, I no, I try to avoid you with food. I don't yeah. like this. <laughs> <laughs> You're asleep when I make it. Anyway. Yeah, that's the way you do. You put a lid, uh, a see through lid, so you can see them, and you don't have to flip them. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. You add water when you do that. A tiny bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of steam them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I did not know that. I love it. Yeah, exactly. Shame on me. Over right? easy, over medium is my favorite. Yeah, so right. then we so we made that dish, mixed all together, put that paste in there a little bit, and then uh, and then put two over easy eggs oh, on and top of it. And then the yolk goes in there? Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. It was bomb. I mean, I already liked that dish, but with Doug's uh, add, you know, adding to it, we made it oh. super bomb. So hold on. Is this sale going on with them because of Memorial Day? Is that what's going on? Honestly, I don't know when it ends. Let me see if I can find out. We have a, you. you know, we have a Memorial Day sale going on right oh, now. Oh yeah, right? yeah, uh, huge one. Yeah, yeah, it ends on uh, the twelfth of June. So, okay, so past right. Memorial Day. Are you talking about butcher boxes? Butcher box. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay so, when's, how long's our Memorial Day sale go? I think it's until June first. Now, our, right. now let me make. I want to be clear, and we can edit this out if I'm wrong. I don't want to steer people the wrong way. It's fifty percent off. All programs. Everything. Not all, bundles. No, programs. all programs. Yeah. yeah. Every single program, 50% off until? June 1st. Okay. So we don't do this kind Dang. of a sale except for maybe- um, Couple Black years. Friday. Twice Black maybe. Friday That's or something like that. Yeah. So this is huge. And then what's the code there? MD- 2020. 2022. Uh, 2022. Yeah. So if you go to uh, mapsfitnessproducts.com, any MAPS program, you'll get 50% off with the code md 2022. And again, we only do this usually for Black Friday. So this is a, a pretty big deal. So do it. Do you want to increase the usable amount of protein that you consume for your body? Would you like to digest your carbohydrates and fats better so that you get more energy, less digestive issues? Do you eat a high protein diet? You got to check out this company by optimizers. They have digestive enzymes designed for fitness fanatics. So you take these when you eat you get more utilization of your protein, you get better digestion, you feel better, improves recovery, reduces inflammation. I use them all the time. It really makes a big difference with my digestion. Go check them out. Head over to mindpumppartners.com, click on buy optimizers, use the code mindpump10 for 10% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Greg from Texas. Greg, what's happening, man? How can we help you? What's up, Greg? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Hey, so I recently listened to your podcast uh, with Stephen Cabral, and so I indulged myself and did the test. I did the hair follicle test, the blood test, and the urine test, um, and I got my results back about two weeks ago when I met with my health coach last week. Um, just a quick rundown of my fitness journey. I really got into it about five years ago. I always played sports growing up, but never got into serious weightlifting. Um, or doing any type of gym work. I was just athletic in general, just as an outside kid. Um, but since getting into it, I lost about 70 pounds initially. I was originally 230, and then I dropped all the way down to 156. Then I started bringing my weight back up to at least to 190 to 200. Um, I'm six foot, and I sit at 205 today. Um, but the concerning thing that I saw getting my test results back were was that I am a low oxidizer, which I didn't understand. I'd never really heard before. Um, and I kind of went over with my health coach what that meant. And she said, this kind of means like a slower metabolism. Um, and she gave me some foods and fruits and vegetables that I should specifically be eating because what it meant was that my body wasn't digesting things properly. So I needed to give it what it needed. And I guess typically with a low oxidizer, it requires higher carbohydrates. So you're looking at like a 60% 20, 20 ratio for what you're taking in and that my body right now isn't breaking down proteins correctly due to a mold infection that they discovered, um, in my digestive tract. So I'm working with them 
to do the cleanse and get that taken care of. So my question today is what should my focus be on if I'm still trying to build muscle? Should I even try to attempt to build muscle right now um, with my protein ratio being so low and me needing to focus on having carbohydrates to have more sustained energy? Um, that was the reason, main reason why I took the test was I had been experiencing so many lulls in energy recently. And it turns out that I'm just not eating enough carbohydrates to give my body the proper energy. So yeah. that's you're, my question. 60, 20, 20, by the way, is not, you're not low. You're fine. Yeah. yeah percentage wise, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty normal uh, a diet. Yeah. Sure. So the, the way I understand oxidizer, I remember, by the way, uh, back in the day, um, we used to do these questionnaires to determine if someone was a fast moderate or slow oxidizer. And essentially that, that, that basically means how quickly you, you convert food into energy. And I used to have this whole presentation around it. Anyway, anyway, they now have testing that's much more accurate. Um, and so here, here's the question I'm going to pose to you, Greg, which version of you do you think is going to build more muscle, the healthy version or the less healthy version? Well, obviously the healthy version right. will, will build the most muscle. That's right. So don't, yeah, I, when we give advice on the show, eating high protein and doing certain things, we're talking to a general audience, but if you put someone in front of me as an individual, mm -hmm. sometimes my advice changes. You know, I've had clients who do way better on a more vegetarian diet where the protein was much lower than what you might hear us recommend on the show because their digestion was better. They felt less inflamed. They had more energy. So because you're working with um, people who are working with you as an individual, you're working with experts who are looking at your profile, they're looking at your blood test, your urine, and your hair. They can give you individualized advice that I can't give you right now on the podcast. So I would say take their advice. Now, on the other end of it, you, you say, okay, well, how can I build muscle? How can I still focus on that? Well, that, that's the workout part. You let us worry about that. That's our expertise. Now, let's still take their advice on that as well. They may tell you that you need to work out less intensely, more intensely, or whatever. But as long as you send that muscle building signal and you train appropriately, the diet that you follow that they recommend to you that's better for your health is going to be the one that's going to contribute to the best gains and the best results. I, th I think he understands that. I think the question is the last part you just said that he was really looking for is should my like programming change because I'm focused on my health. I'm not, I'm not eating as maybe high, high protein. I'm eating more, more carbohydrates. Does that mean I shouldn't be focused on building muscle? And so the, the short, easy answer is no, absolutely. Still follow a, a maps program and still focus on trying to build muscle. The, uh, the one thing that I would just caution is your health comes first here, right? And you're going to be getting advice from a, a nutritionist who's helping you along the way. And to Sal's point, they may say, hey, you know, it seems like you're, you know, overreaching or training too hard intensely. So you would just scale back. So that I wouldn't rec it's like someone in your situation, like I would never say go follow MAPS PED, right? Like that would be terrible advice. You'd run something like anabolic or performance, maybe even aesthetic. Um, and then I, I, I ran anabolic. Um here recently and I did pretty well the first time around and then I took a break and I started running it again and I just hit a wall. Like it was hard for me to get past the first phase again um, because it just felt like I was going nowhere. Like I just kind of plateaued and again, the whole energy aspect came into yeah. it. And I obviously at the time when I was running it, I wasn't eating enough. I don't think to have sustained energy for the program. Um, but I recently had bought symmetry so I was wondering, like, if you think that would be a good program. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's great. One to do. Great that's program. Fine. And, great, you're, and you're addressing the, the reason. It sounds like you're really addressing the reason why you felt the way you did um, with uh, Dr. Stephen Cabral's team. So symmetry is great. I would follow that. Um, and if it feels like it's working, if you feel good, stick to it. Another program I, I would say that might be good would be strong. Um, but I, I like symmetry for you. I'd say stick with that and follow their advice. And I think you'll start to see things moving in the right direction. And by the way, uh, we just, I mean, we just finished the finalizing the contract last night or the night before Doug and I with, with Cabral. And we are in the process right now of starting the forum. So like we have a hormone forum, like we have our private forum, we're also now going to have a forum specifically for people that have questions just like this uh, from Cabral's team. So that it's going to be managed by them. There'll be, it'll be somebody in there pretty much around the clock answering questions. They'll come on there every week and do live, live Q and A's. So that's coming for you guys. That's a, and it'll be a free service for mind pump listeners to be, have access to that. So just know that's coming. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Greg. I hope that helped you. Oh, thank you so much. Excellent. Yeah. So I'll, I'll use an example, kind of what I was talking about, because I do think this is an important point to make. We've made it before, but I, I think it, 
can't be stressed enough. You know, you look at like people on the extreme um, end of the diet spectrum, like Dr. Paul Saladino, right? He's a big carnivore athlete, uh, uh, advocate, I should say, where, you know, eat mostly meat or all meat, no carbohydrates whatsoever, no fiber. And for him, it radically improved his health. Now, generally speaking, a carnivore diet is inferior to a balanced diet when it comes to building muscle. There's, there's tons of studies that show this, that eating carbohydrates and fats and having a balanced diet is probably better or definitely better for performance and strength. But in his individual example, those were terrible for him because whenever he ate anything aside from meat, he had an immune response, yeah, reaction. inflammation, reaction. So for him, the best diet to build muscle was the carnivore diet. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm using an extreme example, just kind of illustrate what I'm talking about, where if your health is bad, I don't care what you read or what you hear as the advice. If it's not working for you and you feel your health being poor, don't stick to it just because you heard you know, podcasters and, and influencers and read a study on it. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, your individual body is what counts, not what works for most people. Yeah, getting yourself healthy is the utmost priority always, and so that's why it's always going to shift uh, in terms of whatever you're doing or whatever advice you know, general advice we're kind of putting out there to the individual, uh, what's going to move the needle the most is to to have all of your systems working at its optimal uh, ability. And I like, and I was going to kind of suggest symmetry just because I, I always feel like if there's something you're working on health wise, like to also like kind of slow down and take that time to address other things. So maybe it's like joint health and maybe it's like, yeah. you know, stability, mobility, things that like you would, you would totally not have as much fun doing, but he's low energy right now. And it's something that he can kind of, kind of focus. And it, it tends to kind of mirror that uh, process nicely. I like that advice because I, I got the impression that that's what really he was looking for. I think he, I mean, I don't think we need to convince him anything about what he should or shouldn't do diet nutritionally. I think he's on board with that. I think his big concern was now that I'm focusing on my health and really trying to get that in order, can I still try and build muscle simultaneously or can I still train in a manner that would be, you know, advantageous to lifting and heavy and building muscle? I think that's where he was, what he was really searching for. So, mm -hmm. and I think the answer to that is, yeah, and, but you still listen to your body, right? Like uh, anabolic, I think is great. I think symmetry is great. Uh, but if you're going along and it's taxing, uh, and you're not recovering, like then I would scale back on the intensity on that. But more than likely, it, with him feeding himself uh, in, in this manner, he's probably going to feel better. He's probably going to feel great. He'll build more yeah, muscle. Yeah, start, you start. Ramping. He's going right. to build more. And I, you know, I was referring to the, the written part of the question where he's, you know, he's pretty specific and he's like, "How can I build muscle with lower protein intake? How is this yeah. going to work when I'm eating so many carbs?" You know, that's why I wanted to address that. And I know there's people listening who may feel better on a diet that is not the quote unquote ideal muscle building diet. And they question it. Wait a minute. You know, I know I'm supposed to eat this way because I read about it, but I feel bitter this way. Am I going to lose muscle? No. If you're healthier, you're in a better position. Well, the irony of that too, though, is, I mean, a 60, 20, 20 is pretty much the standard muscle building diet that I would put somebody on. Yeah. So that's the ratios I, I put most clients on unless they have a specific condition or they don't like that much carbs. They prefer a little bit heavier fat. But for the most part, a 60, 20, 20 is a, a very balanced, normal split. And you can build tremendous muscle off of that. Our next caller is Rachel from Illinois. What's up, Rachel? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thanks so much for having me on today. You got it. All right. You want my question? Yes, Fire I away. do. Okay. So I'm a full-time personal trainer. I've been doing this for eight years. Um, and then I'm struggling right now because I'm you know, full-time training in the gym as well as teaching classes, and I'm virtually training people still coming off of COVID. Some people prefer to do the virtual stuff still. And I'm struggling to get motivated to train myself. And I know your guys' background as trainers and stuff like that. I didn't know if you had any advice for someone like me who's in the gym all day, um, active and all that, but I just can't find the motivation to actually train myself. Mm. I like this question. Yeah. Do you, do you want, is it just cause you want to get out of work? Cause you're in the gym. So you're like, I want to leave when you're done. Uh, it's more so I think, yeah, like just to get out of there or just, there's so many distractions from other people coming up and interrupting me. If yeah. I get into my workout, uh, and I don't know if that's avoidable, but just kind of getting in my old routine. I used to train five days a week, uh, break it up. And now I'm struggling to even like get into a routine where I'm feeling like I'm actually building strength. I mean, I'm maintaining because I'm 
active all day, but I'm just not finding like that five days a week where I'm like lifting heavy or making any gains yeah. in general. I, you know, I remember that you guys remember that when you, you manage gyms and it's like you course, work out oh, in the yeah. gym, you worked in members would come up you'd get your all the time. Yeah. People staff. Would that's why I love the, that's why I love the over the ear, big headphone trend. Yeah. 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 I love that. Trend. And then the hoodie. Yeah. yeah I love about, that yeah. trend came so he could hide. You know what I used to do, Rachel is I used to uh, work out at a different gym. So I would, I manage gyms and then I used to get interrupted because poach I, clients. I'd work out <laughs> and then I'd hear my name on the intercom, you know, Sal up to, I was, I was the general manager, right? So Sal up to the front desk, I have to answer a question. Member would come up to me, staff member would come up and my whole workout would get ruined. So what I used to do is I'd have my time to work out, which usually was from 12 to 1.30 and I'd leave and I'd go work out um, at another gym. Now you may not want to do that, uh, but I, I would ask you, are there other forms of physical activity that you do enjoy? Besides working, well, out that's the gym? that goes along the lines of the tip that I was going to give that I think has been crucial to the you know two decades plus of training that I've done is I when I, I've been in this situation multiple times and what has helped me is completely shifting my focus or my goal. So what sometimes it's hard to get motivated to go back and do kind of this you know same thing that I've been doing for nine years of you know getting stronger, getting leaner, building some muscle. It's like, how about radically shifting like your focus? Like when have, when have I ever trained just to get a, a, a bigger vertical or to move faster or to be more mobile or, you know, pick an exercise that you never do like a Turkish get up and get really good at it. Like, I, I think that helps uh, fitness professionals when you do when you've done this for a really long time, sometimes the same old lifting to be strong, lifting to look good goal all the time gets boring. Yeah, totally. And, and so I love when I get in a rut like this, if I feel that way, I'm like, well, you know why I feel this way? I'm so tired of chasing that same bullshit. I've already done it. I've already proved myself I can get hell ripped. I've already proved I can get hell strong. It's like, but you know what I haven't done? I've never got really good at a Turkish get up, you know, or I've never said I'm going to write a program to increase my vertical by six to eight inches and see if I can do it. Like I, that has always helped me to get out of those ruts and to just kind of refocus and switch my goal. Yeah, totally. To piggyback on top of that, I um, would, would get in those same, in that same mindset, but I would sign myself up for something else that I could learn uh, a whole new technique, a whole new modality, you know, something that's like really stimulating uh, that, uh, you know, I knew I was going to suck at it for a while and I had to like practice it continuously because then that drove me a bit more uh, to incorporate that in the workouts. And then also, you know, who benefits from that is your clients. Oh yeah. I was just going to say right? that. So it's, it, it's just one of those things like there's plenty of those now out there and I've, I've been looking at them a lot and I'm kind of, that's one of my one things where I'm like, ah, you know, doing this is amazing, but also if I was still just being a trainer, there's so many of those like modalities that are popping up out there that are so interesting. Like one of them is like Landmine University. I don't know if you've seen that yet, but look into their stuff. Really, really cool what they're doing. But there's just a lot of examples of that that you can look and seek to, uh, you know, enhance your education yeah. as well. Rachel, how do you still enjoy training people? Yeah, I love my job. That's the okay. thing. And I do love actually listening to your guys' podcast. I've come up came upon it like a couple months ago and it's really helped me with new ideas and just like information and stuff. So I feel like that way, like I'm learning new things to do, which I then do myself. Um, so that's been really helpful. And I do like that idea. I enjoy all sports. Um, uh, being in the Chicago area, the weather is just terrible. So it's like mm -hmm. finding something I can do inside because you know, like I love to run, but then again, listening to you guys, like running is like, <laughs> no, 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 listen, listen, I want to be clear. Okay. Uh, running's better than nothing. It's better than nothing or doing nothing. Yeah. And also <laughs> look, you're a fitness fanatic. You work in the space. So, you know, it'll probably happen. You run for a while and then you'll probably be like, yeah, I feel like I want to lift again or I want to do more mobility work. I mean, that's, that's an amazing, by the way, it's a very good way, uh, to, to have your, your lifestyle around fitness is to, to weave in and out of different modalities, different training methods. And then as a trainer, and this is why I asked you if you still enjoy training people, Justin made my favorite point, which is as you do different things, you, you become a better trainer. Yeah, You just do because you have different insights, not necessarily new information. You don't necessarily learn new info, but as you implement different things, you get more excited about them. You maybe notice things in your clients. Brings that creativity back. That too. energy and that creativity yeah. makes you a better trainer. So- you, you might be stuck in this rut of this is how I should work out, 
But how you exercise, I mean, there's a million and one ways to do it. Forget about your goals for a second. Go have fun. There's, I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong. Or just radically change, radically change the goals. And then part of the goal could be have fun. Totally. You know? So it doesn't have to always. I think we always get, we, we always default to the get lean, you know, lose body fat or build muscle. Sure. You know what I'm saying? That, that it all, we always default to that as, as trainers and coaches, I feel like. And even like. Uh, members it's like there's so many there, this this world of health and fitness is so broad and i i agree i i love justin's point that he's making since we're talking to a coach like man go dive into something that you're really unfamiliar with if you've never gone deep on kettlebells go deep on kettlebells you've never gone deep on landmine go deep on it. if you've never gone deep on mace spells and like build your entire routine go learn take a certification do your whole routine around that and what you'll see is like you're going to find so many things that you're going to be able to apply to all your clients. And it, I think it'll rejuvenate both your, your own training and then also what you're doing with your clients. Completely. Now, at, at the risk of potentially angering Adam, do you have uh, MAPS Prime or Prime Pro? No, I didn't. I Since I started listening, I haven't. She's only been listening for a month or two, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's only the ones that have been listening for years that I rail okay, on to. Right, right. Rachel, yeah, I'm going to send, send you MAPS uh, Prime Pro. Because I think okay. that'll really benefit you personally, and then it'll benefit your clients. There's a lot of stuff in there that you might not be familiar with, so uh, take a look at that. And maybe that'll spark some, you know, some of that, that motivation, some of that, that yeah, inspiration. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That's great advice. No problem, Rachel. Thanks for calling in. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you. You know, if we were to, if you were to compare like two different individuals, one person follows the perfect routine, but really doesn't enjoy it that much. The other person doesn't really follow the perfect routine but loves what they do all the time over the course of a lifetime, who's going to be more fit and healthy, right? So And happier. And happier. So <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. And, and the problem is when you, uh, believe it or not, the big problems happen when you stick to one thing all the time, you never move outside of it. Then, then issues start to develop. And also, again, just like the previous question, we communicate to a general audience, but t talking to Rachel, it's like, okay, so what? You don't like to work out in the gym, go do something outside, go do something else. Nothing wrong with that. You're still active. And as a trainer, it just makes you better. Our next caller is Aaron from California. Aaron, how's it going? How can we help you? Good. How's it going, gents? Uh, first off, just like to thank you guys for the opportunity to, to come on your show and ask a question. Um, but I guess I'll just get right down to it. So um, I've been listening to you guys for about four years now. Uh, so I've you know heard a, a whole bunch of different you know uh, training tips and things from you guys, um, but. I first bought a program about the map starter a couple of years ago that came with the maps prime, uh, program in it mm -hmm. and, um, been kind of messing around with it. I didn't really get into it. Uh, when I bought it about two years ago, cause I had, uh, I'm active duty military and had some training and a deployment that came up that kind of took me away from, uh, my fitness goals. But, um, basically what I'm trying to figure out is based off the maps, uh, prime program, um, I just bought maps performance as well that I'm starting to run and I'm trying to see, should I, uh, be using <clears throat> the separate workouts from maps, prime zones, uh, do like one zone per day and just focus on those priming exercises, or would you guys recommend kind of picking and pulling from different zones, um, to kind of focus on trouble areas? Like if I've got shoulder mobility issues or ankle or knee or hip, um, just kind of what you guys recommend as far as, uh, building a priming session before I go into a workout. All right, Aaron. So first off, I want to, I want to thank you for your service, but let's get into your question here. So for someone who's listening right now, not familiar with maps prime maps prime, uh, has an assessment portion. It's called a compass test. You do the mm -hmm. test and then that'll direct you in terms of what priming movements you should do before you work out, which will be correctional in nature. So it'll help you fire muscle a little bit, a little bit better. It'll help you get better recruitment patterns get into the groove faster and really maximize uh, the effects of, of your workout workout, right? So did you take the compass test, Aaron? Yep. So I did, uh, did the three compass tests. Um, and like I said, noticed some kind of mobility issues uh, to my back or my shoulder. I've got bad shoulder, bad knees. Um, so I assumed that it was kind of a, you know, focus on, on the problem areas. If the workouts from that workout day, um, are going to be, you know, the focus, but, uh, wasn't hundred percent positive. So, yeah. So, so based on your test that will direct you and tell you how many <laughs> priming movements per zone you should do before your workout. Um, so I would do those priming movements from those zones that you did the worst in. So if you did like mm -hmm. really bad in zone one, 
then you'll pick, I think, two or three priming movements from that zone. Mm -hmm. If you did really well in zone two, then maybe just one <coughs> and so on. So that helps individualize it for your body. And then what you do is you do the priming session before your workout. So if you're following mass performance, the first 10 minutes or so will be your individualized maps prime priming session. And then you get into your workout. And then afterwards, if you have time, you do the, what's called the post priming uh, session. And that's how okay. it's individualized. Yeah. And it'll work uh, alongside with your body in, in essence. Uh, to add to a little bit to that, um, because there, I, I, this is a good question for a lot of people that have, have the program and are, have the similar type of question. Um, Sometimes what happens is someone will take these compass tests and they fail like miserably and there's like all kinds all of, of them. all yeah. kinds of issues going on. And then in that case, I normally tell someone to pick, you know, maybe two uh, areas to like really focus on. Um, and if every time you go on or like what you notice helps you move better the best in the workout and then we'll mm -hmm. eventually work our way through the last. So I don't know how many areas that you saw issues in so if you had like four or five things that you that were really glaring i might pick just two of those and say let's 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 fix these two big rocks like let's say in your case because you mentioned knee right away what comes to mind for me is like hip and ankle right or you mentioned mm -hmm. shoulder so i'm looking at the shoulder mobility stuff right so i might pick two or three movements that one that helps your shoulder, one that helps your hips, one that helps your ankle mobility. And those become your staple priming movements every single time before you work out. In okay. addition to that, any uh, you want to get in the habit of doing that as much as you can because we're working on an, on mobility in, in a joint where you, you lack it, then you, it, it doesn't hurt to do that two, three, four yeah. times a day. So now that you have those priming movements, the, the the idea is I always do this before I lift. And when I'm watching TV or down hanging out with the kids or doing something, like I'm always trying to do these little movements yeah, to five improve. And this is where we kind of individualize it because it depends on the severity of what you need to correct. Right. So if you, and you'll notice yeah. like uh, the distance, like for instance, it, it, it took uh, for you to get your hands to touch the wall or your elbows all the way back or, um, you know, and just in terms of your, your external rotation, your shoulders. So if, if, uh, you know, depending on the severity of it, like I would repeat those movements, like whenever you think about it throughout the day, like this is just one of those things we're re teaching the body that this is a priority, uh, to be able to maintain and hold this type of position and to get in this range of motion. So, uh, the more frequently you can do that, uh, and connect with it, this isn't about like intensity and, and, uh, this isn't an exercise where it's damaging. This is something that where you're reprogramming, uh, your body to, to be able to form into these positions. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, actually. All right. Perfect. Cool. I'm glad we could help. Thanks, Aaron. All right. Thank you very much. You got it. Yeah. Um, if, if people really knew the, the value of proper priming, I mean, nobody, everybody would do it. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a little complex, right? That's why I, yeah. I, I like that question. And I like addressing this because if you own prime um, and you've got a lot of issues going on, it could be a bit overwhelming. You know, Definitely. it could be like, oh my God, I've got, I failed all three tests. Where do I start? What do I do? And do I do it before workouts? Do I don't even do another workout right. and all I do is prime. So, and there, and you know, it's, it also presents one of the greatest challenges that we had building maps, fitness products, right? Is we knew that there's such an individual variance that there, there's no such thing as a, a single digital program. That's great for everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we took some core principles that we know would help the majority but all the idea of this podcast, the forum, you know, the the community that we've built is to be able to give people access to these these big rocks that we think they'll help them, and then teach them how to modify it and mold it into for themselves, yeah, for yeah. themselves and their lifestyle. And we try and simplify it, right? Because yeah. that was the biggest thing. Was like I know a lot of these like movement assessments and uh, you know from physical therapists and really like brilliant people that uh, and, and they're pretty elaborate. Uh, but it's like, how do you apply that? How yeah. do you apply that every day? How does this make sense to your everyday average person? And so, you know, to, to simplify it, we need to keep having these conversations to be able to uh, get people to understand, like there's a simple way to address it and, and move the needle the most. Our next caller is Aubrey from Nevada. Aubrey, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, how's it going guys? First Great. of all, I just want to start like saying thank you, just like everybody else. Um, I've learned a lot from you guys. It's helped with schooling and everything. So I really appreciate it. Awesome. Nice. Um, I want to start kind of just giving you some background on my life. So I go to the University of Nevada, Reno. I'm studying kinesiology and nutrition. 
Um, I am a senior, so I'm almost done. Um, I have another year left, but um, I also work two jobs. So I work a full-time job, have about 16 credits usually on a typical semester. And then I also have a part-time job at a PT clinic. Um, so I am very, very busy. So I get up around like 4.45 every morning um, to get to work at 5.30. And then I work pretty much till noon to one. Um, and then I go to school until around three. And then I work at the clinic from three to around 7.30 to eight. Um, so super busy. And I'm just kind of wondering how to program around that. So I have a very unpredictable schedule, um, things like that. I've been tr trying to follow programs, um, some of your guys's programs, but it's just very difficult. So I'm just kind of wondering how I can program around that and when I should prioritize like sleep and things because I have to get up so early. And if I go to work out sometimes after work, I won't be getting very much sleep. Yeah. Well, Aubrey, before Sal steps in and answers this, I have a question for you. Um, have you had the hamburger tacos at Taco Shop? I haven't. Oh, my oh, God. God. Oh, bro, what so a good. sin. Man. <laughs> you have to get one of the states downtown from you. Oh, okay. Have, you oh, said the Taco Shop? Yes. Okay. I'll have to go there. You it's, will have to. It's a little alleyway. It's hard to find. Okay. Look up look up taco shop and you gotta go there and you get the hamburger tacos. The cheeseburger. Okay. Oh, excuse that me, cheeseburger. Yeah. Excuse me, cheeseburger tacos. Thank cheeseburger you. Cheeseburger. That's, okay. like, that's like an abomination right there. Oh, <laughs> American it's, food. It is amazing. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So, hey, so so Aubrey, first off, I want to say you're a champion. I mean <laughs> Yeah. You are, it sounds like you're paying your way it's through quite school. the workload. You're learning a lot. You're working hard. Yeah. Like you are a champion. It's not always going to be like this uh, until you have kids and it'll be like this again. <laughs> but uh, I'll say this. Okay. So <clears throat> sleep has got to be our priority. Okay. It has to be a priority because if your sleep goes down, your workouts don't matter anymore. So make sure you prioritize sleep. Okay. And I'll say this, you're, you're, you're probably better off following a workout program where you can throw in workouts when you have time. In other mm -hmm. words, not super scheduled. So what might be good for you would be a program like uh, MAP Suspension, where you have suspension trainers hanging somewhere in your room and, or take them in your car, and when you've got 30 minutes, put them up and do some exercises. And that would be the way that I would do it, because your schedule is crazy. I mean, you're literally you know, yeah. 4.45 to 8 p.m., and that doesn't even include studying. Mm -hmm. So it sounds crazy to me, and it sounds like you might have like one or two days off during the week, like Saturday, Sunday, which you probably want to sleep most of the day. Yeah, I, I have Saturday, Sunday off. And yeah, Saturday is kind of like my I don't want to do anything day. Sure. And then sure. on Sunday, uh, me and my boyfriend basically meal prep all of our meals throughout the whole week. So that way I'm not not eating because if I don't meal prep, I won't eat. Yeah. So we do that Sunday. And then those two days, I kind of don't even worry about trying to get into the gym because it's like I need those two days of to course. just kind of like reset. Of course. Yeah. You're, yeah. I mean, you're, again, you're a badass. I would, I would get, uh, do you have map suspension? No, I don't. Right. Um, right. I was, I'm working, trying to work through map symmetry right now. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I noticed that I'm very unsymmetrical in my, um, side to side from my right side to my left side. Um, so I've been trying to work through that, but like I haven't even gotten through a full week and I'm supposed to be starting uh, phase three this week. Yeah. So, well, if you want to follow map symmetry, then the way I would follow it is I would do some when you can and then in wait chunks. for the next. Yeah. In, in chunks. I mean, that's another way you could follow map symmetry. So I know it's laid out a particular way, mm -hmm. but you have to modify it because your lifestyle is, not, is, I mean, I, so hectic. I like if I like, Maps anabolic one day a week, and then suspension trainer sprinkled throughout when you can through the week. Okay. So if I could, if I could mold like like a full body workout, once. yeah, one day a week, you, you hit everything, and, and just and choose the day that you feel the best. You got the best like rest, that. um, and you and you feel great. You make sure you get one good lifting full body routine out of Maps anabolic, and then I would have that. I love the suspension trainer advice. I would have that tool at my house somewhere strapped up to where oh man i got a little 15 minute window or 20 minute window right now and i feel pretty good like i'm gonna go over there or maybe i've been sitting studying for the last two or three hours yeah, i take just want to yeah. take a break and move for 15 or 20 minutes i'll go get out on my suspension trainer and do some moves on that um i like that so if i were to customize something based off of what i'm hearing from you i would love to see you train one day a week at a full body maps anabolic type of routine and pick one of just pick one of the three uh, days every week when you're when whenever you can fit it in there and then the other times I love the advice that Sal gave 
with a suspension trainer. So that would be my yeah, that's m- a good idea. My advice. Yeah, just break it in chunks. I mean, it's it, you're going to get it when you can get it, and so you'll know what that looks like. And if there's uh, somewhere around where you can hang that strap, uh, you know, at work or um, you know wherever you can get it, like or do pull ups where it's available. So I mean, rubber bands are good for this as well. But I like this. I like the advice of suspension. Training. Doug's going to hate me for this, but I we're also creating something right now that I think would be perfect for you. <laughs> I know. Oh, man. I wish so, we could promote it. I'll see the same thing. Yeah. So we got, we got something for like someone just like you who yeah. has, we've this. been thinking about your needs. Yeah. So, <laughs> so for now, for now, I think the advice that we're giving, I'll hook you up with the program stuff. So, I think that's a good place to start, but uh, look out for what we got coming yeah. the next couple months. We'll send you anabolic and, and suspend. Do you have anabolic? Uh, I have anabolic. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll send Just you we'll send, suspension. We'll send you suspension. Then. By the way, so what do you start? Are you going to be a physical therapist? Is that what you want to do? Yeah. So I'm studying kinesiology right now at UNR. Um, and then I'm minoring in nutrition. And then hopefully I'm going to start applying to PT school this year because I graduate next spring. So cool. hopefully good. I can get into PT school by next fall. Look into Luna. Okay. Luna okay. is a company that allows physical therapists to kind of moonlight like Uber. And oh, yeah. uh, really awesome. Way less paperwork. You actually make more money too. And it's uh, it's totally changing the the physical therapy industry. So look into Luna. Yeah. It's a great company. Cool. Yeah. I think I remember that episode you guys talked about that and I was like, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> totally. Thanks, Aubrey. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, best of luck. Thank to you. you guys. You got it. You know, I will say this, right? It's uh it's not ideal to live your entire life this way where you're like just grinding all the time. No, but this, I will say this. This is a phase. The time to do it is yeah. when you're that age. You don't got kids, you don't have those responsibilities. And this is when it, when it's the, it's a good time to see what you're made of mm-hmm. and to push yourself and to set yourself up so that later you don't have to do so much, right? Oh yeah. No, it's 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 the most ideal time to really push and grind and uh establish that that foundation that then you can kind of um, you know pull yourself out of. Now, that being said, w- when you guys say push and grind, I'm thinking push and grind on all these things that she's having to accomplish. The gym should try and complement. Correct. Yes, yes right? that's what I mean. So Absolutely. I think that's the mistake that probably I made at this age. You grind and, uh, everything. Right, you grind everything. It's like no sleep in the same shit like sleep's overrated, I'll do it yeah. when I'm dead, shit like that. Yeah. It's like so you're you're also smashing you're grinding it grinding at the school dance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to stop doing that. You're grinding you're grinding everywhere. Uh <laughs> And I, this is a perfect Grand example pepper. of she's she's killing it in so many other aspects of her life that you know the workout piece you don't you actually don't want to take the same probably approach and mindset as you have at all these other things and you should be thinking more what can I do to complement? Uh, well, it's, it should always be that way. Yeah. Your exercise routine should always be uh, designed or applied in a way that improves the quality of your life in the current context of your life. How can I work out in a way to make my life better right now? And that means your workouts are going to change as your life changes. So yeah, but somebody like at the, somebody at this age sometimes will 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 misinterpret that feeling of like pushing in the gym as like oh, what do you mean sometimes? Probably yeah. most of the time. And yeah. then what yeah. you don't realize is, is and, and I'm glad you started with the like the number one thing that we want to focus on is sleep first because then you sacrifice the sleep. And then what you don't realize is how that kicks up cravings. And then now how the, the how yep. making good food it's choices. Domino effect. All this. Yeah. Right. And then you're then, adding caffeine. That's right. Then else. you're adding caffeine and then you're, you're, you're Next sleep thing you know, deprived. You're smoking crack in the back alley. <laughs> wow. It's just crazy. Wow. It just, just escalates. <laughs> just, just, you don't really want to do does. that. Yeah. Real fast. 